Yeah, so I will talk about uh, uh, new studies about Starbucks and the multi messenger implication. I worked it with my colleagues in, in Naples. So, here just a, a first uh, um, um, expectation on, uh, for Starbucks when much before the Fermilat and Ice Cube observation. So, when it was not uh, easy to constrain what can be the uh, spectral property of the sources at higher energies, and just uh, I reported this reason and and here in this slide i want to say that looking at the ice cube diffuse flux measured that uh, we it's possible to to fit uh, in a in a direct way the energy part of the spectrum looking at the blazer and accelerator this is the case extrapolating uh, tick sets of 506 plus 056 to uh, um, an entire population of blazer and see that we have a room at the, at the lower energy for a reservoir type uh, object. So in this case, putting together the galactic contribution with uh, most uh, extragalactic reservoir, probably we are able to fit this part of the spectrum. And also here in this slide I reported, one of the reasons why uh, also Starbucks come up in the, in the community, just uh, that's one case of NGC, 1068 that is uh, close by Starbucks that was observed as an hot spot in the northern sky of ice cube and we see here that when we look at the tv neutrino observer in the direction with this object we it's 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 kind of hard to uh, justify all this flux just through a uh, Starbucks component and basically there are several paper and work who had an IGN activity so just to 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 fit uh, the entire flux, uh, measure it. So that's another. Okay. So for when we look to this kind of object, uh, and when we want to extrapolate the contribution to a diffuse sky, we should we can play together with the neutrino from uh, ice cube and and with the uh, gamma ray from Fermilat, and uh, we. We also look to the uh, uh, extragalactic gamma ray background that is measured by Fermilat, and there are different work that that try to uh, fix and pu put a bound for the different component of the AGB, and we have some prior that we should take into account, like uh, the the, six, the the one of uh, 2016, both about the resolved point like contribution inside of this of this uh, measured spectrum by Fermilat. And uh, also, it's uh, why it's important to look for Starbucks because those objects are a uh, very high star formation rate in the central few hundred parts of the of the galaxies. So, and and also uh, containing cosmic rays in this part, we have a, a very uh, a nice environment for the proton-proton interaction. Therefore, we can expect uh, more uh, adronic production uh, for this kind of object. And uh, of course, they are very abundant. They are not so, so luminous in gamma rays. A and uh, as I said, the, the, the star formation rate is from 10 to 100 times what, what we have in the Milky Way. So when, when we try to uh, describe this object to a calorimetric scenario, so uh, assuming that in the central uh, part of the galaxy, we have a telos greater than the escaping time, and we, we can play with a different parameter of the sources like the Pmax inside of the galaxy, so the maximum energy reached by uh, accelerated cosmic rays inside of the galaxy. The alpha that we observe in the, in the gamma ray from the few known sources from Fermilat at, at, the gamma, at the gamma ray energies, and also the rate of uh, supernovae remnant, and also the, uh, then therefore also the density of the interstellar medium. And generally, uh, M82 is, is taken as a prototype because it is a well-known, and we have uh, data from Fermilat and from imaging Cherenkov, like in this case, Veritas. And we can use, uh, uh, we should use also a physical cosmic rays to describe what happens inside of the core of this galaxy. So we should take into account the time losses, the advection and the diffusion inside of the galaxy. And uh, here, what happens if we take into account not only one prototype, so not only M82, but we take all the 12 known 
uh, SBG from Fermilat, and we look at the distribution of the alpha from this object, and uh, we see that when we extrapolate this kind of uh, contribution, so using the uh, calorimetric uh, approach to describe the expected gamma ray and the expected neutrino, and then extrapolating this to a possible diffuse component, we see that we, we obtain something different than using just M82 as a prototype. So you see here that for gamma ray, you basically, for the diffuse gamma ray, you basically obtain very something uh, very similar, but uh, for, and exactly so here, uh, you see that uh, there is no much difference for the low energy part also of neutrinos. So you have in, uh, in orange gamma ray and in blue neutrino. And then you see when you move on the high energy part of the spectrum, how can change uh, the expectation when you use uh, so a blending, so a distribution of different alpha the, of, from the known SBG and using just one of them as a prototype. So in this case, we, we, this, uh, we, do this, uh, we did this uh, multi-messenger fitting of, of gamma ray and, and neutrino components. And, uh, and this is interesting because, of course, we, 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 this, this kind of approach and this model leave space at high energy also for other, other astrophysical objects. And uh, here I reported the, uh, the different uh, ingredient that we use for this uh, multi-messenger fit. So basically for the diffuse gamma ray, we use the SBG blazer and radio galaxy component. And for neutrino, we use the blazer and the SBG component. And we put together different samples. So in, the, uh, in the, this kind of fitting study, we use the two sample of ice cube the as a sample and the cascade, and we use the AGB also, uh, as I said, for from Fermilat, and we take into account also the prior on the resolved source uh, on the AGB. And what we obtain is basically here you see the expectation, taking into account here the as a sample and uh, and the Fermilat uh, AGB, and here take into account the cascade and the uh, formula TGB and you see uh, the one sigma possibility spectrum that you take out that it, that it comes out both in uh, in gamma ray and neutrino and uh, it's interesting that that uh, was the old uh, prototype scenario uh, taking into account only m82 that's the new scenario with the blending of the known SBG from from Fermilat and you see here it's interesting because we closed also the parameter at one sigma, the possibility of the Pmax inside of those galaxies. And you see here that we have a preferential Pmax at around tens of PV. So that's an, another important information that comes for the reservoir in general, and especially for this kind of sources. And uh, we are able, we can see here that at two sigma, you can account up to 40% of the uh, total ice cube flux. So basically, then here in this slide, I said that are too few the uh, the SBG observed by Majin Cherikov, and we should expect much more for the incoming telescope like CTA. That because it's very important for us to extend the spectrum of Fermi at higher energy to constrain more the parameter of the calorimetric scenario. And uh, here we did the same using the calorimetric scenario for all these known. Uh, uh, observed in gamma ray SBG, and we use this relation to uh, to link the uh, the star formation rate uh, with the uh, with interstellar medium, and also this relation for putting together the star formation rate for linking the star formation rate with the uh, radiation. The so we we we, we, we also we also um, uh, check the the the. the normalization that we obtain from the calorimetric scenario with the infrared and observation that they give us the normalization of the star formation rate. And we did this for all these sources. And when we, uh, we look for, for, uh, for the expectation on neutrino for, for single SBG, we see that uh, that's the one observed from Fermilat. And we see there are some interesting cases like the small Magellanic cloud and the Sertinius galaxy that can be observed probably by 
by uh, km uh, uh, in one decade of observation. So it's, uh, it's what we can expect looking not only to the diffuse component, but looking at the single point uh, sources, uh, so at the single SBG known uh, close by SBG actually. And uh, uh, it's also uh, interesting to see what uh, CTA maybe can, can see, in, can, 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 can tell us in the near future when we compare the expected gamma ray set from these uh, sources with the sensitivity of, uh, of this incoming telescope in the, for the southern hemisphere and for the northern hemisphere. So another question that comes out when we look to these, these sources is what, what can happen it's, it's in if we change a bit the physics of the cosmic rays inside of the sources. So how the expectation can change if you change also uh, the cosmic ray physics inside. And then we, we check just to uh, the, the, the calorimetric scenario that we use with another scenario that, that comes out recently where the, uh, basically the advection is not considered inside of the core, just that's because it's, you should take into account how much is ionized your medium and if your medium is hot or cold. And uh, here we report also the parameter that we use for the wind and the classical radius that we use for the nucleus of the star bus galaxies. And you see here that also changing this, it can change also the expectation at higher energy in gamma rays. And so uh, it's, uh, we look how this can, can be important also for neutrino, not only for gamma. And here, how it changed the relation of the two scenario considering the gamma luminosity and the star formation rate for, for uh, this object. And you see here that basically we try to do this exercise for different SVG. And uh, uh, you see here that basically for all of them, the two scenario can change the uh, expected gamma ray and at the high energy part. And uh, we put here the expectation of SWGO. So, the, no, sorry, the, the sensitivity of SWGO. And also we did uh, a mock data production for the CTA. So you can see here how also this measurement can tell us much more about the physics of these uh, sources. And um, so also coming back to this work that basically changing the physics and then uh, just uh, shutting down the advection, basically you're filling all the EGRB emission of Fermilab through, through the, the, the component from the SBG. And, uh, and also this, in this slide we see how the, the two scenario changes also when we look for neutrino. And so you can see here that Basically, uh, in the in the in the calorimetric scenario, standard scenario we use, basically we leave a space for other component for the EGRB data of Fermilat, and but basically we are fitting much more. We are describe we are basically able to describe much more neutrino in the diffuse flux from ice cube. On the other hand, if you take into account the other model and the, you should thin down the advection in the core you are basically saturate all the EGRB from Fermilat and you are able to describe a, a much less number of neutrino or from, from ice cube. So just here I put a small recap of, of the different component that comes out putting together the AGB and, and uh, the neutrino from ice cube and just arriving to the, the summary so the increasing number of, uh, of cataloged SBG and the very energy gamma rays will help us to constrain more the, the, the parameter of the calorimetric scenario. And uh, we just considering the blending and the known SBG from Fermilab, we are able to um, account up to 40% of the ice cube flux if we go further up to the, the equal four more or less. And uh, uh, of course, the, the new telescope will tell us also about uh, much more information about the, the spectral cutoff. And um, we know that uh, uh, even, even though from the diffuse sky, they, they give an important contribution for point like, it's very difficult to disentangle them with neutrinos. 
we have some few cases that can be interesting, as we said, like SMC or Circinius, that maybe will be visible with km 3 net and ISCOM G2. And uh, of course, the global neutron network statistics and uh, the, the new dedicated server survey for of this object from CTA will tell us much more. We will be able not only to constrain the scenario, but also uh, especially the physics that we have inside of these sources. So yes, thank you. <laughs>